ride. So, welcome back. Episode D. We're gonna go over shelters today. But before we jump into that with Tyler, we're gonna get into some housekeeping stuff. We are realtors, you need help in Phoenix or down here in Utah, call us. We also have affiliates all over the country. You need ammo, US Brass House is our sponsor. Our code, 1911 Syndicate, all underscore, no spaces, get you uh, $20 off per case. And Sling, Slide Tactical, best slings on the market, use that same code, get you 15% off your order. And onto that, Ty, you want to just do a short intro of yourself? You didn't tell me there was ammunition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, US Brass House, it up. Yeah. Hey, but, I'm Tyler White with TJX Survival. I uh, make content for, for Survivopedia, Survival Dispatch, <laughs> TJX Survival. I teach classes, take people to backcountry with like canteen, poncho, pocket knife, whatever. And figure cool. it out. Yeah, we cool. figure it out the hard way, right? So I, I just, I actually do have a website I forgot to mention. Sure. Uh, TJXSurvival.com. Cool. cool. I've had it for like three days. Oh, really? <laughs> so huh. I still haven't updated all that stuff. Congrats. So. Anyway, that's all my stuff. So shelter, right? What are some considerations you want to take into account when there is shelter? It's gonna be a little bit different of considerations that you're gonna to wanna to put a tent versus where to put a primitive living shelter. Okay. We're in a bad spot on top of a mountain, but a great spot for filming. So I'll kind of address that. Um, one thing you wanna watch out for in trees, widow makers, right? And those are the dead trees that are like laying right there. Yeah. Good wind is, and that sucker's gonna come down and guarantee it weighs as much as a car. Another thing you wanna stay out of is a well. And a well is where all the cold goes, right? When the sun goes away, all that cold flows just like water down to where the rivers are. Okay. So putting a tent right next to the river, that's great because you've got a barrier between the bugs and a barrier between the cold. Sleeping right next to the river in the bugs and the cold is bad. So you kind of want to move up off the river, up kind of on a bench. Especially in the desert, you're going to get that morning sun. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be a little cooler at night, but not cold. Um, around here, we picked this spot for a couple of reasons. There's some firewood right there. There's some firewood or a potential shelter position right there. There's some firewood right there. And it's only like three plant types that are really usable right here. We've got quake and aspen, some alder, some scrub oak, and that's about all that I can see around this, right? I saw some alligator juniper also. But. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's from my days of Boy Scouts, right? It I is a tree. It is a tree in Arizona. Is it? I really? thought it was totally no, it is. I thought you made that up, and I was gonna. Be no, so it's proud an alligator juniper. It has like alligator scales that are the bark. I'm, I'm not bullshitting you. 100 percent fact. I totally want to see that now. Yeah, I just learned something. Come to Arizona. He's I'll totally teach you how to survive there. My brain. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> we'll go get some food at the store. Anyway, so, sidebar. No, you could. Okay, so in a position like this. Uh, this tree, Quake and Aspen, is a clone. People don't freak out when I cut it down because if I cut this one down, it's the same plant as that one and that one and that one. They're all genetically the exact same plant, right? Um, so put a primitive survival base next to firewood. Otherwise, you're gonna be hauling firewood for hours. Yeah. Put it next to something that's already kind of like a shelter. This is already kind of like a shelter, okay. right? Because all you really need to do is get the wind off your back. You're going to sit by a fire all night tonight. We are, it's almost noon, but because the sun's going down so early, we need to treat this more like two or three in the afternoon as far as sunlight's concerned. Mm -hmm. So you right now just need to load up as much firewood as possible. Okay. Think of three full trees of firewood. Holy as shit. As a minimum, okay? Especially in oh, the winter. Jesus. All right? So whenever people make firewood, when I'm teaching classes in the West Desert, they'll get a pile about this big and be like, yeah, it'll take all night to burn. Maybe if you have a fireplace that you put it all in there, you close it, you walk away, but it burns faster and hotter in the open air. And I usually have to tell them to make at least three times as much. Wow. Three complete dead trees that you drag over and you can just pull that sucker in and keep adding it. Yeah. Also, you need a way to reignite that fire at night because if you wake up and it's cold, you're in trouble. The way that you're going to do that is uh, normally is juniper bark, sagebrush bark, some sort of nesting material, cambium layer of cottonwood, none of which we have here. Okay. So <laughs> here it's going to be feather sticks. Okay. So if you're <clears throat> in an environment where it's too wet and you can't get kindling, you split the tree open, take the dry core and make feather sticks out of it. Or if you're in an environment where it's like a monoculture environment like this, where we only have quake and aspen, I can see spruce like i don't know two yeah. miles up there yeah yeah that would be a great place to have a shelter but i'm not walking up there yeah right so 
you're gonna need a pile of feather sticks. Okay. So, and the other thing, when it comes to shelter, there's two ways, two, there's two or three ways that you gain and lose heat. One of them is physically touching something. That's called conductive, because it conducts heat loss and heat gain. One is convection, which is just standing here, and that's just the air. Technically, when the air starts moving and pushes against me, that, then that becomes conductive, right? And then there's radiant. Believe it or not, that sun is giving me radiation or radiant heat to warm me up, right? So if I take my body, the part of my body that creates that heat, which is the blood, and I put that surface area where all the blood is, my armpit, my neck, my hips, my body, and I lay it right down in the snow, I'm going to die 25% faster because I'm going to lose heat 25% faster into the snow. So the first thing we have to do is create a bed. Okay. Right? Get so off the ground. Get off the ground. Okay. Whether you, you throw down a mattress, inflatable mattress, or whether you put down sticks or whatever, and there are some techniques to that. So the first thing is create a bed. The next thing is get that fire started, right? And really they're kind of, I don't care if you start the fire first or the bed first, both of them have to be done. If we can't make fire and we can't get off the ground, what you can do is put something like a, uh, a backpack or something underneath the big juniper trees, quake and aspen, something, right? A big tree, a large growth tree, which there aren't any right close, but you sit underneath it with all the pine needles and you'll just huddle until tomorrow morning, right? Kind of do the huddle. If you got a buddy, you're gonna be big spoon, little spoon. That's the butts. Yeah, well. big spoon, little spoon. Mm -hmm. You won't die. You'll be real friends after that's done. Close. So that's the worst case scenario. Add a bed, it gets easier. Add fire, it gets easier. Add something to stop the wind, and it gets easier. And if you're just gonna be here for one night, don't go all faux potato on that shelter. It, it can quite literally be a wood pile that blocks the wind that you burn all night long. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You're golden. Just get you through the night. Yep. And if you get four hours of sleep tonight, you're doing great. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if it's one person, you're going to get increments of 20 to 30 minutes, maybe two hours max. If it's two people, you can go four and four, and then you're eight hours deep, yeah. right? So one person sleeps for four hours. Hey, boss, we're going to go to... As soon as we get this built, you're going to bed. I don't care if it's 3 o'clock in the evening. You're going to sleep. At midnight, we're going to switch. And you're just going to sit and watch the fire and keep it nice and roaring while I try to snore for a bit. Tomorrow, we're going to get out. Okay. So that's shelter, right? Okay. Starts with what you're wearing. It also starts with the food that you eat and the food that you brought. Then it is something to keep you off the ground, something to keep the wind from stopping you. And why did I talk about rain right now? Shouldn't be raining. It's not going to rain. It's going <laughs> to snow, right? Yeah. So if we are in an environment where it's going to rain, we want something with a high-pitched roof. Mm -hmm. We start getting into uh, tree limbs upside down on hooks. That's kind of for another environment. For this environment, snow can insulate you from wind. Biological material can insulate from you from wind, but worst case scenario, if you can get your butt off the snow and sit by a big fire until tomorrow, you just survive night one, night number one. Okay. So you want to give it a go? Let's Do see it. We can make Let's him. make something. So if I had to spend the night right here with me tonight, I would. Whenever you have a tree right next to the tree, there's this gap or this hollow space that goes to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I yeah. step through it. Yep. Yeah. So you found the hole. That's already missing. <laughs> Only hole he's ever found. <laughs> Sorry. So, Lay up. Lay up. So clear that out. It's a body cavity, right? Right. A body, a body place. Could you just sleep in you, that hole? If you load it with trees and insulation and you put a fire in front of you, yes. That's if what you I'm just saying. Crawl, you have That's what I'm down doing. there in the snow, you're going to be dead by 2 a.m. I don't want to do that. But it's already, it's a wind blocker, right? That's what I'm saying. Now let's think about this. Where are the majority of winds going to come from? It's kind of a complicated answer. It's not always correct. East. Southeast. South, southeast. Pretty good though. Right? Pretty close. I'm sorry. You should face south, southeast because they come from the north, northeast. Well, I was close -ish. It makes sense? <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you look at teepees on the plains, the majority of the smoke holes are facing south, southeast. And the entrances are facing south, southeast. So that it can get that... Uh, early morning sunlight mm. and not be facing into the late evening sunlight. So you want the heat in the morning, but it's too hot in the evening. Yep, yep. Uh, and the wind will usually blow off their back. So it's coming from the north. That northern wind, the north face, that's where the nastiness comes from. Okay. Not always, because oh, okay. you could be on one side of the, uh, the continental divide or the other, and that, f that evening flow off the continental divide will come from the east to west on this side and west to east on the other, right? So if you have a little bit of local knowledge and you know where the wind's going to come from at 2 o'clock in the morning, face that sideways so that it will feed the smoke away from your fire, but don't like face straight into it. Okay. Right? okay. It's my bet where the cold's going to come from that direction because that's a higher altitude and it's going to dump down this direction. Word. Right? Yep. So there's, 
and that also is north-north-ish. So there's a high probability of it coming from this direction. You won't know until you spent the first night. And then the next night, okay, we're just gonna turn this this yeah, way. Yeah, pivot. Yeah, Right. okay. So I would make a hole, load it with uh, plant-based material until you can stay dry, put firewood on the back and get a fire going right here. So can we do that? Let's do it, let's make it happen. All right, guys. Oh yeah, let's we'll we'll break. So kids, one of the things that I always suggest always. to people when they come into the wilderness is a saw. And personally, I've always endorsed the buck saw. It just so happens that Tyler has one today, so he's gonna show us how this bad boy works. Okay. I what could I show hold? you. So you can hold the sharp part. All right, let's talk real quick about what it is and why it's homemade, right? I've got a non-homemade silky saw in there. I love them, they're great. But up in Canada and with the military, you can fly with this, right? You can't so much fly with this, but this is, well, I should, there we go. This is just willow, juniper. This is just a round long stick of some sort that you're gonna carve and create. I had one in the back of my truck. We disassembled it. And that also shows that once you make it, you can disassemble it and hike another wherever. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Cool. So you can roll this up inside of a billy can. You can stick it in a survival belt. All that you need to add to it is a bolt or a nail or something, cotter pin, piece of wire or whatever. And then you could use 550 cord. I used, uh, this is uh, pack tape from mule tape. Doesn't matter, right? Super, super simple. So if you have just this, you can make this and it gives you something big and useful. So let's assemble this guy. Okay. It's kind of like a cut spot that I made that it kind of holds it. So once you've got these two assembled like that, you're gonna throw one on throw the other one on okay go ahead and tilt it back my way and then push inward so it gives pressure on that blade and then just hold this is kind of a pain in the butt hold this down so now all i have to do is twist it against each other until it's tight right so i'm going to stick this in here start going one direction and you can do this one man yeah i just laid it on my i just laid it on the ground he can okay. we can <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah clearly. he can <laughs> clearly I and then this is called the Harleton H buck saw because a dude named Kelly Harleton come up with this design. So go, go that direction and then go the other direction or go against it, right? I feel friction starting to happen. The cool thing about this thing, what's that, about seven inches? Uh, Five? Yep, yeah, <laughs> exactly right. so. So you'll be able to take down a 14 inch tree with that. Shit. You can cut down a 14 inch tree with something that fits in your survival belt. That's legit. That's. Wow. Kind of want to rock wow. it a little bit. Oh. oh. That's all right. We'll redo it. it. Again and fucking breaks it. <laughs> Every time. That we were close. Actually, that's kind of funny. We were close too. Should I cut? Okay. Want to hold it? Well, this is survival. You guys want to go get some firewood? Do you know Fuck to, you, Crispy! Do you know where to begin? I got no clue, I'm just... He said get wood, so I'm getting wood. It's wet now. I'm trying to get over there, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I did not sign up for this, dude. I was just, the just a camera guy. <laughs> See, that's, business. that's fast. Like, throw that in your backpack with some string and two bolts and you got a saw wherever you go. Good fallen tree over there. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just looking for wood. You're my way. We got a camera, man. We're gonna go to this tree over here. Why? Because it's smaller and looks easier to harvest. This is very reality TV-ish today. Yeah, reality TV can suck a dick. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You wanna know why I'm filming right now? Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing either <laughs> and I wanted to look busy. So the darker ones are dead ones. Come here, buddy, I'll tell you how to find firewood. So the best firewood is gray dead and standing. What I mean by that, gray means it's more than one year old. The bark isn't great because bark is actually, in, in most instances, the bark's function is to prohibit the tree from catching on fire. Gray is the color that it turns after it's been two seasons. And then if it's on the ground, it's not standing. It's got the wet from the ground. So this dude that we just touched, even though it's fallen in the snow, the snow's dry, it's not gonna absorb into that piece of stick. It's dead, it's gray, and it's standing, so it's gonna burn. Okay. So if you if you are burning something that is moist, you gotta boil the water out of it before it'll catch on fire. Yeah. That takes a lot more effort. 
So that tree right over there that's chopped over, we can hit that with the buck saw. Just right here, 20 yeah. feet? Yep. Hey, that's, that's what I was trying right to work on. Like. Let's pull that bottom over here a little more. It looks a little chunky, but the only thing that's keeping that on is this cambium okay. internal layer. Like, you cut those two pieces and we're good. It's on firewood. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is the strongest you've ever looked. This is the strongest I've ever been, bitch. That's a cute stick you got, Jake. Hey, I'm not saying this is a brag, but I'm dropping this shit down with a goddamn knife. I did it with that. I don't know, stupid saw made from Mother Nature. Over this dude. Okay. So it's hanging out over yep. that way. Then we'll buck saw chunks of it off. You guys are gonna want to move. Like, yeah. Wait. Oh, you bitch. That was the money, money shot. I wasn't ready. It is what it is, homie. This little dude right here is a good one to have in your backpack, nope. Nope. right? Keep you can get these at Lowe's for like five bucks. Let's talk about what we did. Okay. So I put two three to four foot length sideways ones yep. on the top and that's going to hold the main weight of it right yeah and then i put roughly six foot diameter big as my wrist top to bottom yep. okay now we're going to start a fire by by midnight two o'clock in the morning there's going to be about a three to six foot hole of water and ice clear to the ground and then it's going to freeze if we don't tend it but it's going to create an, its own little hole and a microclimate. So you'll readjust this thing. Okay. You have to redig, or you can dig with a shovel. I'm setting this is this up as if you don't have a shovel. Okay. Because ma majority of people won't. So you're basically going to melt yourself to the ground. We're huh. here three feet, four feet to the ground. Yeah. Here roughly. Yeah. So wide ones, you can go top. I, I've done top and bottom. You can do more. I don't think we need it because these are pretty thick. Got my verticals. Um, you can stake it in the front and the back to keep it from spreading if you bounce around a lot. Now the key with this, I like to use spruce boughs, but I'm using alder and quake and aspen because that's what we've got. And you'll basically just like punch it in the side and then lay it down, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a big piece, so I'll punch it in the side. And, and this is just giving us that loft off the ground? Uh, yes. This Primarily is that's the a, goal? Where my hatchet go? Can I grab something? This is going to create a spring. Think of it like the spring part of a... Uh, mattress. Yeah, a mattress spring. Yeah. And the key is to these big fatty parts mm -hmm. go on the outside, fatty parts on the outside. And you want it to be fluffy so that when you lay it down on it compresses. Okay. Because we want still air between us and the, and the ice or sure. the snow that we're laying on. You ready to lay on this and tell me what it feels like? Sure, dog. Does An it have a weight limit? We're about ready to find out. Another thing too. It's about all I'm good for is finding out weight limits. <laughs> Don't get too worried about something that's longer than the length of your knee to your head, especially when it's hasty. Just in terms of yeah, because you're not going to spread wits. all out unless you make a long fire. Right, kind of um, curled up a little bit. At a minimum, you want knee to head. Okay. Later tonight, maybe tomorrow, we can make it bigger. We can start doing lean to. We can grow from there. Right. This is so, pretty quick to do. I mean, that's far. Like this is. What do we do this in 30 minutes? Yeah, I mean, granted, yeah, five people, three though. people, you know, kind so, of chopping away. But an still. hour and a half, two hours. So if it's three people, 30 minutes, then it's an hour and a half of one. Yeah, sure. Right? right. I'm not good at math, so yeah. All of the maths. Oh. Um, I always let Europe have So for that, maths. would you do, a, like, because some of those branches, are they going to, like, should I throw my shell on first and then lay down? So that Gore-Tex kind of. You lay down on this, and you're going to be very surprised at how comfortable it is. I'm more, I'm more worried about getting poked and ripping my shit. Try it. Okay, cool. I trust you. I'm just, I mean, I'm try. sussing it I, out, I, you know. I know I can lay down on it with what I've got. I don't think it's gonna rip it, but I don't know how snaggy that is. If you wanna throw a shell on it, throw a shell on it. And I will finish up this last little piece. Use up what we've got yeah, left. Yeah, if you could make my bed a little bit more comfy. I'd, oh yeah, I'd man, I'm here for oh, you. right to the ditch. <laughs> I didn't what even happens? do that on purpose. Damn, that was legit. What happened? Talking shit. Just like that guy? Yeah. Face down or up? Or? I would put your head here, cause it's kind of tilted a little Kay. left. Just lay down on your side. Oh. oh yeah, it's a 
actually very surprising. It's shocking. It's kind of like laying Dude, I'm, on I'm a, not even saying that. Like, it's actually... I believe it. It's, it's kind of like laying on like a, a spring mattress, right? Like right now you feel probably comfortable if you can take a little bit of a nap, huh? Yeah, there's a little spot on my hip that needs some more. Yeah, but you find those and we've yeah. got more here. This is the gray, this is the gray stuff, right? So now we need to reinforce what's behind you. So these dead logs that we've got, I would scoop a little bit of that snow out and start building up the dead logs behind you. And then we make a fire. These two dudes right here, these are called dog legs. Fires three things, heat, uh, oxygen, and fuel. Okay. And it's, there's also a fourth one if you use the other analogy and that's mechanisms of continual reaction. So the things that'll stop the mechanisms of the continual reaction are cold, water, a lack of oxygen, a lack of, of heat and a lack of fuel. Fuel. So if Which we is why stick, you get those long ones and as they burn, throw, get them more correct. into the fire. Okay. And the other thing too, when a fire burns, if you make, I'll show you this. When a fire burns, if you make it level, this is just gonna chop off. If I go like this, it's gonna crawl up. If I yep. go like this, it'll walk all the way up. So, so if you have a log angle. that's like this in the fire, it's not gonna go out. It's not gonna like crawl away. It's gonna break this off. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You, you, you'll burn this part off and then you just flip the whole thing over. Smart. Or you'll burn this part off and then you'll just keep sliding it in, right? So for here, we're gonna do, uh, it's an, uh, this is Tyler's fire lay, okay. right? It's a combination of things that I created. The dog legs I got from Nesimuk, who is George Washington Sears, a writer in the 1800s. The platform I got from Boy Scouts. The teepee I got from Boy Scout failures, because teepees always tip over. So I just tip a teepee over on a platform on top of dog legs. I can put a, a little cliff on the back of it or whatever. But the reason we're doing this is because it's off the, off the ground. There's unlimited amount of oxygen that can go up from this because heat rises, it creates a vacuum on the bottom, pulls the oxygen through, and it's self-sustaining. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's like the flu on a fireplace. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And this would get lower throughout the course of the night, I would assume, right? And that's okay. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be about a three to six foot ring of dirt once we boil this all the way to the wow, ground if you stay crazy. here for two or three days it'll dry that dirt out wow so by tonight you're going to be on the ground in mud and slush by tomorrow it'll be mostly dry and it will create a microclimate also <laughs> this is just to start the fire i need three trees minimum to sustain it through the sure. night i probably want more than that because i want to be feeding it i'm going to maybe do a huge long log right here with three butts of trees on top of that called a siberian fire and that big wall of fire is gonna keep me heated. If there's two of us, I'm gonna create a chair or a bench or something for the fire watcher and the spot for the fire sleeper. After a few hours, I'm gonna readjust, move some things because it's, it's gonna shuffle and fall. So here, I want more feather sticks. I'm gonna kind of roll with what we've got. These feather sticks, actually, if you have kindling, use it, right? Because once your fire started the first time, you can just use the fire to make more fire. You don't have to Use your kindling. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, okay. and I've got enough in this little thing. I, I probably can refill it, but I can keep this thing going forever. Now a lighter is going to burn right on these feather sticks, but I got to get it completely going. Like I got to actually get them sustained. The teepee's going, but now I have to tend it. I have to actually get it so it will vertically climb, right? Well, it's the, it's the feathers that are burning. Yeah, but and we're still not quite where we want to be. I'll add a little more, but once we get this little bundle going, we're, we're going to be doing better. I really need more feather sticks. And you can cut these quick and break them off. And throw them on there. Yep. You know, it's got to be pretty, they just got to work. It's heating up, Yeah, right? so I like right you. now, this fire is drying this log, and then this fire is going to dry that log. They were dry, but you can see chunks of ice and water on them. Yeah. So sure. we got to burn that out. Yeah. Then we can actually use it as fuel. Okay. And it looks like those broom handle size sticks are starting to really catch now, right? Yep. And that's the first level of fuel. Okay. So I feel substantially more comfortable about what we got going on now. Once uh. the kindling's going, all your little matchsticks are rolling, then you can start your fuel. Once the medium and small fuel is, is rolling, the big fuel's going, and then I'm going to have a big old bonfire right here. I might even need to push this back a little bit, but it's... We're still good in distance. You want to be pretty darn close to that fire. Yeah. Okay. Which is why we don't want to have synthetic. Yeah, because an ember. Synthetic burns holes. If you have wool, like a wool blanket or a wool coat or something, I can lay right next to this fire, dry out the wool, and stay warm all at the same time. Okay. Pretty Probably good. Like kind of a wrap up. Yeah. yeah. Kind of wrap this bad boy up. Yeah. So I'll, I'll hit the last part and then you guys can end it. Sure. So the fire's going. 
the bed's made, we're off the ground, the, the fire's off the ground, it's gonna melt a hole. We're gonna be on a little bit of a platform or a slope, we'll have to rebuild that. Now we add copious amounts of trees behind us to block the wind, right? Three or four complete large dead trees, all stacked up right here. And then we just roll those puppy over at night. Gosh dang, that's cool. I feel like, hear me out. I, I could feel survive. Like I could do this. <laughs> you it's motherfucker, no way. <laughs> no way. I could do this. You couldn't. I could. See, look at that. It's already drying my pants out. Oh, yeah. See the yeah. steam coming off the pants? Wow. That's shit. That's almost it's magic. Yeah, that is magic. But shit. when you see that, it's really close to getting too hot. So right. when you see that, you got to watch it and rub it, or you're going to start burning through layers. Shit. Wow. That's wild. You can put your gloves on a stick. If you stick it like in a hot tent, you'll watch the steam go right off your gloves, like vertical right into the fire, it sucks up in a hot tent. So fire is amazing in drying your stuff out. And it's warm enough, we could lose a few layers. Like if you were yeah. sweaty, oh, yeah, no right doubt. now, take your shirt off, scrub your armpits with some snow, get rid of the yeast and bacteria, a little air out, dry that shirt off, put a dry shirt on, go to bed dry, man. You want to demo oh, that for us real quick? I'll do it at part three. Part three. As long yeah, as you can ask Wipe which out. ways to the gym. Yep. Oh. Well, I guess that'll uh, wrap up part two. This was uh, actually quite super informative. Cool. Yeah, yeah super this, is, cool. this is very cool. So we'll see you guys on part three. We don't yeah. know what it is yet. We don't. We're going to figure it out right here, right now. We'll part figure it out. Part three is me taking a nap. We'll right see you in a bit. We'll see you guys soon.